There's two camps of people who are really excited about Stalker 2. There's the Xbox fans who can't believe that they're finally getting a pretty hyped up exclusive on their platform. It's only going to be for about three months, but still, that is something worth getting excited about. They've accepted this pretty unanimously, they're all excited for it, and they can't wait to play Stalker 2. But then there's the Stalker fans who... There's so many of us, right? So many different kinds of us, but upon watching the trailer, you're, you're in one camp or the other. You're either looking at the new screenies and the new trailer like... Nice. While some other fellas... <laughs> I'm going to quote my high school soccer coach and just say the following. <clears throat> hey, fellas, I don't like using this word, but what I'm hearing from you is just a shitload of bitching. <laughs> but if you look closely at the trailer, you may notice that there's a message that seems to fit the shoe of a few... Who have come to who have come to the scene with perhaps an arrogant, snobby attitude towards Stalker as a franchise, like like with there being so many mods for the game, everyone seems to have their own definition of what Stalker is because they've tailored it their own way. And maybe I'm looking too much into this, but I certainly think that GSC is trying to say something implicitly in the trailer, which to me it stood out more than the Pewies that they showed. And, which is nice because they confirmed the Maluk in the game and that's going to be pretty nice. So what are GSC trying to say here? Straight up, they're just a whole bunch of dudes gatekeeping the Stalker franchise to what they believe Stalker is. And before we get into the thick and juicy of this pseudo giant steak we have in front of us, let's address the trailer being in English. Which I think is a perfectly normal thing for a full budget AAA game to do. But a lot of people are upset about that. And I don't understand why, to be honest. It's as if many of the people making these comments don't know that the original games were also in English. Buzz off, Stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Buzz off, Stalker. We don't let every loser go through. Buzz off, Stalker. Oh, we don't yeah. let every loser go through. All three of you had to say it. Look. And if you bought them in the West, you got them in English, most likely. Look, games as a product are a product of their times. Hey, that rhymes. Games as a product are a product of their times. Sorry, my ADHD attacked. But what I'm trying to say is that the original games had as much done in English as they possibly could for the Western export. You guys are duty. Would you look at that? Where's your equipment, boy? This is a dangerous place. You won't get far without a good suit and a decent weapon. And other languages too. But then, what they couldn't get in English done by the voice actors, they filled in with Russian and Ukrainian voice acting that they already had, which came from the original script. Ow. But there's also the stuff that they didn't have from the script, which they just had the player read. Start talking, buddy. And the main thing I hear from people is that English breaks the immersion that they're getting oh, from the guitar. game. Oh, yeah. I'm in the town with 2T. We just killed some freedomers. Well, that wasn't me. It was them. All along them. Pulling my guitar after blasting. I got a saw. And a dragon knob. And an M4 I sold to duty who is poor. Man, I can rap. I surprise myself with this crap. That's enough. And that it shouldn't be shown in English. It should rather be in... God forbid Russian, because, you know, it's not like hundreds of thousands of people are already dead because of that country's government. Or, appropriately, in Ukrainian. Oh no, Blin. English is the wrong way to play. But the thing is that most of the people expressing this, of course, made those comments in English. And if you believe that a worldwide trailer being in English is a problem, consider that games like The Witcher and Metro reached the global audiences that they captured because they made their games available in many languages with English at the center of the worldwide marketing campaign because it is our day's global language. But really, just look at me. 
English isn't my first language, yet here I am making videos in English and not my native language of gilipollas, all in an effort to universalize my reach. Probably gonna get called the George Bezos globalist now or whatever, but really there's nothing wrong with the trailer being in English unless you believe that how you like to play stalker is the real way to play stalker. If your argument is that hearing English breaks your immersion, don't worry, you can still play in Ukrainian. I'm sure you'll find reading all those subtitles very immersive. So don't worry about it. But yeah, that leads us straight into the juicy part of the pseudo giant bit. The monolith monologue, not the monolith guy. The monologue. After years of work, a group of scientists managed to tap into the no-sphere, the Earth's informational field. And what do we have a decade later? The zone, in our image, after our likeness. Died in an anomaly, shot by loners. Found with a stone around his neck, thrown off a cliff, torn apart by dogs. You cannot kill God, just like you cannot get rid of the sky up above. I am blind, but it is you who cannot see. First, I want to allude to a concept introduced to me by Mario Vargas Llosa, a Peruvian author who, in his book Letters to a Young Novelist, articulates that all creative beings express what they believe implicitly through their works. Not necessarily by design, but they just express how they feel and what they know subconsciously. And I'm always on the lookout for the hints of the creator's being in all kinds of works. So. What does the monologue in the Come To Me trailer, or ED Come Ni, what does the monologue mean? What does it mean? After years of work, a group of scientists managed to tap into the no-sphere, the Earth's informational field. First, the no-sphere part. What does the no-sphere hold? At its core, the rationale of humanity and all beings, along with knowledge, but most importantly, rationale. So, not only what we understand the world to be, but how and why. So yeah, I accepted this right away, and it's part of stalker lore and part of, uh, uh, of Soviet and post-Soviet mythology, but could it be that it represents the X-ray engine? how it was basically tapped into to create the foundation of things like the Metro franchise on, on one complete different end, but also the massive modding community that has made the Stalker games what they are. Going as far as completely changing the Stalker experience and bringing it to a category of game that I like to call the fuck you simulator with Misery and most famously now, Stalker Gamma. Now, I'll admit that I'm not too fond of Gamma. I've played it. I think it's a great mod pack. It's got a, a lot of worthwhile content. But maybe that's a topic for another time. So, let's continue. And what do we have a decade later? The zone. In our image. After our likeness. And yeah, even a decade later. See what I did there? We have the zone. However we want it. You want an FU simulator? You got it. Want an open world RPG with skill points and other happy horseshit? Boom. You want to modernize the original stalker experience? Like fix all the bugs, add new weapons, and just make it a modern shooter? Wham! We really have brought the zone to be whatever we want it to be. And that has created all kinds of expectations for Stalker 2 that are twisted and tied into things that stray away from what Stalker originally is, or was. 
we've all come up with our own definitions of what stalker is and and to me it's not an fu simulator and i think that a lot of people are expecting stalker 2 to be <laughs> it's two to be i think a lot of people are 2d2 <laughs> sorry i think that the snobbier fans now especially those that have really gotten into gamma i, I think a lot of people are expecting Stalker 2 to be an FU simulator, and the snobbier fans of the series do obsess over immersion and atmosphere and other buzzwords that really can't do Stalker justice, but kind of entice you to play because that is that's true. Like it's it is atmosphere, it is immersion, but that doesn't do it justice. But if I can explain and uh, what I understand the games to be, I can't sum it up into one buzzword. So. Here goes. I like to hike and explore in the wilderness. In video games too, but also in the real world. You can either hike on popular trails and guide yourself with an app on your phone that tells you where you are and and how long till the next water stop or the next camp or the trail's end. And it's a really easy, intuitive way to navigate. You can even go without a navigation device and just follow the trail signage. But you can also explore old, untraveled trails or go places without using trails at all where there's no signage, no established camps, no marked water stops where you have to plan your route ahead of time, like actually draw it on your map or your, or your navigational tools. And the genuine thrill of uncertainty is fully present. And the need to face nature prepared with the right tools, knowledge, and skill, that's, that's also present. And you see, when you navigate an established trail with your GPS, you navigate egocentrically. You, you you exist in the trail and you take in what's going on around you. And it's a lot like being on a road. You perceive the world around you and navigate and navigate through it. But when you're in an uncertain environment, like there's no trail, you want to navigate allocentrically, which means you perceive the world, study it, and find yourself within it. And that's the most fun part. For me, when when I go to the wilderness to camp or to hike, uh, and no, I'm I'm not. This isn't a distraction. I'm right on track with my train of thought. Uh, most games give players an egocentric experience, but Stalker dares to force you into an allocentric one. The atmosphere and immersion doesn't necessarily come from the guys in the campfire speaking a Slavic language or a snork startling you or from having to hide from a military squad out on night raids in the cordon. Or pausing to appreciate the sun rising and that you're alive to see it, and the renegades on that platform won't be for much longer. The immersion comes from the fact that none of those things are happening to you because the script said so. They're just happening and you may be caught in those events or you may not. You may be the reason that some events happen or the reason that they don't, sure. But hypothetically, so could any other stalker in the zone. And that's what I think makes soccer so special and unique because of what GSC pioneered with A-Life. The way you learn to live in the zone is by observing, by thinking, by making mistakes. And that's why you'll often find that you died in an anomaly, shot by loners, found with a stone around his neck, thrown off a cliff, torn apart by dogs. The zone teaches. The zone, it's, the zone itself teaches you how to stalker. Getting robbed will teach you to keep a stash. Observing anomalies will teach you what they do. Yeah. Wait, what the? What's? Oh, they're walking into an anomaly. What? Oh, that's psychotic! That is so... What? 
Ew. They're turning into bits. What the? Was it? Look, that's a that's the thing that that's a dude's skull that came all the way from over there. What? That's ridiculous. Should you take a chance with those strangers over there or kill them to save your own skin? It's quite simple, really. But sometimes making things simple is incredibly difficult. And that's why I'm not that big of a fan of FU simulators like Gamma, because while I can deeply appreciate the added detail, the add-ons, the improvement in quality of life in terms of interface and graphics, all of that on one end, on the other, these mods are about making the player suffer. The experience is tailored around the player. The rules for the other beings in the zone are different than the rules that apply to the player. It's egocentric design, in an abusive way, sure, because it's about making the player suffer, but it's egocentric nonetheless. And I see that a lot of people now believe that this is what Stalker should be to a degree. It's about giving the player a, 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 a challenging, tough time. But it's not. The world is unforgiving, and you are in it. It's not unforgiving to you. And I frankly believe that <laughs> that that modes like Gamma exist kind of to develop a superiority complex among players in the community. Like, yeah, I suffered in misery, or I suffered in Gamma. And, and, and I think that that's just a level of snobbery that that's taking us away from what Stalker is and we focus too much on what Stalker should be. And to those snobs who keep who keep trying to gatekeep the game through difficulty, through language barriers. Seriously, who the fuck are you? I think it's one thing to make Stalker better and another to make what you think Stalker should be. Stalker is the zone and the zone is God. And you cannot kill God. Just like you cannot get rid of the sky up above. I am blind, but it is you who cannot see.